Hey all Gear OS reviews, you're watching our video first look and hands-on review of the Ocean Digital WR210CB. This is a low-cost internet radio, so it's connected using Wi-Fi and gives you access to 26,000 radio stations, has a 2.4-inch TFT LCD display which you can use to take a look at cover art information and radio uh, status information, also has a remote control. At the same time, it also has Bluetooth on board, so you can use it as a traditional wireless Bluetooth speaker and connect it to your phone. So it really is a smart all-in-one speaker in that sense. It sells on Amazon for under $87, so it's also fairly inexpensive for what it offers. It's one of, again, one of the more inexpensive models uh, available. Of course, it also has a traditional 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input if you don't want to use Bluetooth either. So you can use this as a speaker for a number of different ways, just as a regular wired speaker, as a Bluetooth speaker, and of course, as an internet radio speaker. All right, so let's take a closer look at the packaging here. Very simple, Ocean Digital does produce many different models and they have more expensive and even cheaper ones available that doesn't have a color display if you want something a bit more basic. It does support an alarm clock and a sleep timer. And again, it has that remote control for easier navigation if it's uh, in a living room or in a different space from your desk area. Uh, here we have an instruction manual printed right on top that tells you how to set it up using the remote control. And then it's a uh, pretty well documented. I would actually recommend flipping over this a few times because uh, it does require a few tries to kind of set up the Wi-Fi for the very first time uh, using the remote and the controls on the unit. And then there is the remote which is actually pretty generic looking but there is a up down left right navigational five ray toggle. There are uh, there's a T9 style layout for numbers but you can see that you have to pick out letters one at a time. It's not really convenient so if you are setting up a Wi-Fi password that's something to keep in mind. For the first time it takes a few seconds to get used to. A power key, there's also volume adjustments, and then there's also a home key, skip track controls for media. It does take, take two AAA batteries, which are not included, uh, so it's pretty typical. Here we have the power uh, adapter, which is again going to be plugged into the wall. There is no battery in the unit, so you do have to be plugged into power at all times. Taking a look at the design first, again, it really is quite portable and small. If I have a phone here that I put right on top, you can tell that it's about the same size as a standard alarm clock. Uh, so, so it's not something too bulky or large. The speaker driver is located on the front. It's made out of a polycarbonate plastic, feels reasonably well put together. You can see it's a mono speaker here with one driver. There's Ocean Digital, there's the uh, LCD color display, dedicated power key, IR sensor for the remote, and toggles for going back home and going through the various different stations that you would save and preset. This is a volume toggle, which is mechanical and actually feels pretty sensitive. Bottom here features rubber feet that prevents it from sliding around on a surface or on a desk, whereas on the back you have the passive radiator for some extra bass, uh, which is nice. Auxiliary input, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to connect this to, let's say, uh, again, headphones or even another pair of speakers which are more powerful. And there's also the power for a 9 watt uh, proprietary plug, which they include. So let's plug this in and take a quick look at the initial kind of boot up sequence. You can see a welcome logo, and we peel back this protector. The screen here isn't using IPS, it's a pretty basic panel, but again, it's good enough for navigating around the UI. Uh, but it gets sufficiently bright, it is a glossy panel, so it reflects a bit of sunlight, uh, as you can see here. So if we zoom a little bit more here, the setup process tells us to select a language first. I can use this to navigate up and down. Really reminds me of an old iPod, like an iPod Nano, uh, so it's quite nostalgic for me to actually navigate things in this way. Next, it's going to scan for available wireless networks. And if we see one that we want to use, I can tap on here. And now I can enter a password again using these, this shock wheel to cycle through letters one at a time. After packing in the Wi-Fi password, we can now see the main interface. It's actually pretty simple. This is the Wi-Fi uh, signal status. It actually seems quite strong because the router is on a different level of the building, but it still is firmly connected. There's a time which is automatically synced to the uh, you know, Wi-Fi network time. Here we can use the toggle to go through the media center if they want to play back content offline. Uh, here's the information. So it's gonna tell you the status of the firmware, things like that. Auxiliary input for the speaker, Bluetooth connection for the speaker. So for instance, tapping on that, the Bluetooth will now turn on. And from here, it's gonna start searching and be discoverable by other phones. And I can connect to it and use it as a regular speaker. If I'm done, I can tap on home. 
Interface seems to be pretty snappy. Configuration is where I can change my Wi-Fi status. I can change the time and date manually, set up an alarm to use this as an alarm clock, change the display brightness, things like that. There's even a weather client where you can set uh, the temperature uh, as well as a location. One other interesting thing is if I tap on the power key, it actually just uh, makes the screen go to sleep. It dims the display. From here, I have a widget that displays a clock as well as the date and also the weather very quickly based on the location that you set. Left and right actually gives you more detailed information. It cycles through these pages for uh, more specific weather info. And you can also change things like the equalizer, software update, things like that. When you're satisfied, I can go back home. Uh, next one here is local radio, so that's going to be uh, internet. Still be using Wi-Fi, so it's still technically internet radio, but it's going to be specific to stations which are set in your region. So internet stations in Washington State, for instance, or internet stations in New York. If you are located in New York, that's where your router is connected to. So that's uh, going to give you channels there. Internet radio here gives you a broader field of various stations categorized by genres that you can just listen to yourself. And so here it's found a few kind of radio stations that are local here to the state. So let's, for instance, let's play jazz and see how that works. Uh, it's going to connect, and it takes a few seconds to buffer, and it's going to start playing back. Kind of pausing the music here. Um, of course, the benefits of a internet radio uh, internet radio device is that the signal as well as well as the overall sound quality should be better than on a traditional radio. Just because it's streaming, um, there's not as much static or distortion depending on you know reception quality of the of the antenna. It just depends on your Wi-Fi connection speed. And for the most part, channels will be in better fidelity so that you can enjoy the music. The sound here on, on the speaker seems to be actually pretty decent. It gets sufficiently loud. I wouldn't say that's the most rich sounding speaker in the world. It's not the most crystal clear sounding speaker, but it suffices on a low cost device like this. I would also point out that uh, you know the biggest question of a device like this would be uh, kind of what devices you already own. So for instance, if you have a smart Alexa, uh, such as an Amazon Echo, or if you have a Google Home Assistant, and you already have a streaming music service, you can just tell your assistant to play back a specific radio station or music, then that really does double duty and kind of uh, does what this does already. Vice versa, if you have an older phone that you're no longer using, you can repurpose the smartphone to act as a radio uh, by downloading an app and connecting that to a regular pair of speakers. So there's quite a few workarounds, but for someone who wants something that's dedicated, something that is simple, that's easy to use right out of the box for internet radio, and maybe you already don't have some of those other smart assistants in the house, then this could also be quite compelling considering the price is pretty low. Um, so, all right, let's go back. I can also heart a specific channel if I want to add it to my favorites. I can also change the equalizers and mode of playback down below here. I can play, play pause the station. You can see here pretty easily. Uh, so all those things can be navigated uh, without too many issues. Tapping on uh, info, it also pulls up some additional details, such as what tracks will play back next, uh, in addition to the artist, if that information is available from the network. It's playing around with the equalizer settings previously, I found that the rock mode and the classical mode were actually the best for actually most genres of music, even if you are listening just to pop, and that's because it seemed to to increase the bass. Uh, so if you're a bass head, it, it gives you much more uh, oomph in the lower frequency with a with your drum beats as well as with bass drops. Uh, so it really does help enhance and bring the music to life, so to speak. There is also a flat mode and also kind of a normal mode that seems to compress the sound a little bit. It's not quite as rich sounding to my ears. So I would actually personally just leave it on either rock or classical. That seems to be the best setting. It's uh, the loudest as well. And uh, surprisingly, it uh, really showcases the speaker's abilities. I thought that at first the speaker wouldn't be too loud, it wouldn't be super impressive considering the size, but with this turned on, with the passive radio, the entire thing kind of rumbles and it uh, vibrates on the surface of your desk and actually is a pretty surprisingly good speaker for the price. Um, otherwise, there is the alarm clock feature which I can tap on uh, here. On here, there again is the 
favorite feature, which you can tap on to navigate uh, that list of favorite channels. For alarm clocks, you can actually set up different snooze key uh, times, such as tapping on this once will snooze it for 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes. Uh, the snooze key is located on the kind of remote control here. You can also tap on the OK key here to actually physically snooze it if you are using it as an alarm clock, but it's not quite as dedicated in terms of how everything is laid out specifically for, as an alarm clock, but it's a, a bonus feature on here. All right, so going into Media Center, again, this is where you can create your own playlists. It's also where you can plug in uh, other auxiliary devices and use it as a regular speaker. And going back home again, Information Center, again, gives me my weather information. So if I tap on just, like, let's say, the very first thing that pops up, let's see what happens. Uh, it tells me, again, the weather in degrees Celsius, as well as kind of a temperature for day of the week, uh, and also kind of an indicator of what the weather will be like for that day, such as cloudy, overcast, rainy, things like that. So it's very simplified in its uh, interface, but it does work. Um, let's go back and other things in the information center. Also financial information can be streamed from the internet, such as uh, you know stocks, Dow Jones. So it's uh, gonna be streaming al along kind of like a real ticker on a financial uh, office or a building. So it's pretty interesting. It tells you, you know, the stock information, you can navigate this list and uh, it works pretty well. Going back home again, Another feature is the system for information, so that's going to tell you the firmware and also your wireless connection status. Uh, so that's pretty much it as far as the main features here are concerned. I would say the Bluetooth and the auxiliary quality of the sound, pretty much the same as with the internet radio quality, uh, not a huge difference. The Bluetooth speaker quality is still quite impressive. Uh, it doesn't have that much di distortion or static. Even if you're playing and pausing the music, it actually sounds quite loud, clean, and natural. And again, with the bass uh, the, that's produced by the passive radiator, it does quite well with electronic music in particular. This has been the OSINT Digital WR210CB internet uh, radio. It's a low cost option that sells for under 85 bucks. And for the price you're getting, a surprisingly capable speaker. It's small, it's portable, and as long as you're sure that this is a niche that needs to be filled in a house, it is a great way to discover content, it's a great way to also access quick news, use as an alarm clock, replace your alarm clock, and uh, enjoy content, radio content from across the world, as well as in local stations in higher fidelity than a traditional radio can provide. The interface is intuitive, I really like the way that this mechanical wheel feels, although typing in longer passwords like Wi-Fi information is a bit of a uh, stress point. Otherwise, when, when everything is correctly set up, it's uh, quite fluid, easy to navigate, and the sound quality and signal strength are also better than expected. So you can check out more details soon, but this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.